good afternoon good morning and uh, good evening to the different timelines uh, welcome to the first of its kind the webinar and international all thanks to our participants uh, the sikkim manipal college of physiotherapy is privileged to have you guys with us for the first of its kind webinar on physiotherapy and the basics of what about the career prospects and how do we progress from there how you guys have reached to where you are today and to begin with, uh, without wasting any time, I'd like to call our head of the department, uh, Professor Nikita Joshi, to deliver the welcome address. A very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to our distinguished speaker from different zones of the world and part takers, takers across the nation. Welcome to today's session, the first of its kind organized by Sikkim Manipal College of Physiotherapy. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce today's panel who are our proud alumni from first three batches. Their dedication and contribution toward the field of physiotherapy has made us proud. I welcome our alumnus from the first batch, Amritansu Kumar. After graduation from Sikkim Manipal College of Physiotherapy, he did his Master of Physiotherapy in Cardiopulmonary Rehabilitation from Indian Spinal Injury Centers of Rehabilitation Sciences, New Delhi. He started his career initially as physiotherapist, physiotherapist in Max Super Speciality Hospital. In 2014, he joined uh, Artemis Hospital Gurgram as senior executive and currently holding a post of team leader to design, execute, and prescribe critically ill and transplant patient in ICU, as well as he is in charge of pulmonary rehabilitation. Now, I would like to welcome our alumnus from second batch, <coughs> Tasi Paldan Bhutia. She has a vast experience in the field of physiotherapy. Her journey started as clinical physiotherapist in STNM Hospital, Sikkim to physical therapy aide at Tabor, physical therapist at Pro Health and Fitness at Queens, New York, spine rehabilitation spe specialist in California, and presently she is working as licensed physical therapist manager at Omega Incorporated at California. Now I would like to welcome our alumna from third batch, Anamika Chetri. After graduation from Sikkim Manipal College of Physiotherapy, she worked as clinical physiotherapist at Sarma Nursing Home and in New Tech MediWorld in New Delhi. In 2010, she got selected as physiotherapist at Ministry of Health, Health Affairs of Health Region, Saudi Arabia. In 2012, she moved to Auckland where she worked as assistant physiotherapist in Arunai Home and Hospital Limited. Mount Albert and Eversley's Hospital, Cressida Healthcare Limited, Belmont. In 2014, she completed postgraduate diploma in health science physiotherapy from Auckland Uni University. Since 2016, she is working as senior musculoskeletal physiotherapist in Motion Health, Upper Heart, Wellington. Now, the fourth speaker is our alumnus from third batch. Subhasis Karmakar. He has done his Master of Physiotherapy uh, in uh, and Sports from University of East London, UK. Worked as junior, junior physiotherapist at Barclay Clinic and senior physiotherapist at Clapham Common Healthcare, London. In 2014, he moved to Sarza Healthcare City, Abu Dhabi as head physiotherapist. Since 2017, he is currently holding a post of senior physiotherapist from Dubai Police and National Rugby Team UAE. He has several research publications and backed several awards towards the contribution in the field of physiotherapy. He has contribution in numerous international events such as London Olympics 2012, Special Olympics Abu Dhabi 2019, Indian Premier League under Delhi Capital 2020, Abu Dhabi T10 League 
under Bangla Tigers 2020-21. Before we begin our session, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who participated to this event to make it a success. I hope the audience will gain insight and knowledge about the scope of physiotherapy and its current trend. Without taking much time, I would like to hand over the session to our moderator, Dr. Raymond Chetri. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that elaborate introduction our speakers have. Uh, notwithstanding, our other alumni and alumna have also achieved, but due to the constraints of uh, the time and the space of the webinar and the availability, we have uh, mustered to get the four of us here together to talk about physiotherapy. So welcome all of you guys. Am I audible to you? OK, so starting with the senior most uh, uh, Amritan Shukumar, uh, you have been uh, one of the stalwart physiotherapists and a proud alumnus from the first batch 2001. And uh, yes, uh, we have been on uh, connect on the professional uh, personal style, but on the professional level, let us hear about your struggle and where you're right now. How does it go? Uh, am I audible, Amitanshu? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, can you repeat the question again? Yeah, uh, just a basic brief about yeah, how you've reached to where you are today. Yeah. <clears throat> go ahead. Yes, yes. No. Yeah. Hello, uh, am I audible? Amitanshu, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah, so the audience would like to know we have already 103 participants with us. They're watching us live right now. So they'd like to know how Amritan Kumar from the 2001 BBT batch has reached to the present position where he is holding right now. Let's uh, hear your life's journey in brief. All right, once uh, I completed my graduation from Sikhi Manipal University, I moved to Delhi. I moved to Delhi and uh, Yeah, actually, once I passed from Sikkim Manipal in 2006, I moved to Delhi, NCR. And uh, I tried. And the first phase of my career was a little, little bit uh, struggling because uh, the situation of India. The yes, yes, Raman, I can hear you. All right, so uh, that is what uh, the, the conditions that apply in India, you know, about uh, physiotherapy, the competition, the level of expertise, the quality of treatment. Uh, what have you got to say on these lines? Matlab, where does Sikkim Manipal College of Physiotherapy graduate stands in these uh, challenging times? And I came over here and I did my internship uh, and then uh, I looked for a job in Fortis Hospital. Uh, And I started working as a junior physiotherapist in 40s. Uh, yeah, fine. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to uh, I'll come to other guys later on. So Tashi, my batchmate and uh, uh, a very good friend of mine. Uh, thank you for the accepting the invitation and being here despite her timelines. Guys, I must tell you Tashi is uh, at 1 a.m. right now in her time zone, that's California. So thank you so much for waking up early or sleeping late, whatever it is, both ways we are indebted to you in deep gratitude for you are here today. So uh, Tashi, uh, 
although I know what you've gone through, but uh, the audience would like to hear about your struggles in uh, the, in the United States. It looks like a pot of gold outside, but then yes, uh, the reality between how much a physio has to do and whatnot. So let's just get a brief head start to what you've been doing and what are you up to, Tashi? First of all, um, thank you so much for having me. Um, I hope you guys can hear me clearly. Can you guys hear me clearly? OK, thank you so much. Um, so basically, after I passed out, I moved here to United States. Um, I had to work as an aide first while I was, um, you know, preparing for my license exam. So once I passed my um, national physical therapy license exam, I work, start working as uh, a physical therapist in outpatient clinic. Um, yeah, so that was pretty much my journey. Basically, I moved up from working as an aide. I worked in a hospital. I worked in an outpatient clinic, um, you know, and then now I'm here like working in California as a full time outpatient physical therapist. So I'm thankful to all the I know like I'm here, you know, to almost like one o'clock in the morning, but I feel like it's my duty to um, give back what I got from SMIMS, um, you know. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, uh, that's great. Uh, thank you. Yes, yeah, so uh, Tashi, one more question uh, pertaining to the clinical practice, private practice. How does one get to uh, lay hands on a patient in the United States? So basically when um, I'm talking about more outpatient clinic scenario, basically when we get patient, um, it doesn't have to be, I don't know, like the status, current status right now in India, but it doesn't have to be sent by a doctor. So we can have direct access to patients. So basically when we see the patient, what we do is we evaluate them, design a plan of care for them, and then kind of plan their goals and, you know, depending upon their needs, and then we work upon, you know, achieving it. So, um, yeah, this, we, I, what we do is we try to communicate with the doctors and other team members, you know, so we can give like good uh, treatment to all the, you know, and achieve the goals and whatever the patient need is. Basically, I think the main uh, core is similar um, to what, you know, um, Indian PTs are doing. It's just that um, I don't know the current scenario, but it's just that we don't have to go through the doctors um to see the patient so we can do our hands-on manual therapy we can design like exercise program for them we can plan like home exercise program for all the patients so yes it's it's pretty pretty good over here like there's a really good demand for all the physical therapists um you know and we have something called physical therapy assistant here too so you know there's really high growth in the demand of the pts and pt assistants over here Great, uh, thank you. So yes, our students can still uh, try for the pot of gold in California. Then Tashi, I'm sure you'll be a great help to them. Uh, moving on, uh, Subhashis, I'm coming to you. Yours is a interesting background, notwithstanding others are not. But yes, coming to Anamika Chetri, who's practicing physiotherapy in one of the best uh, physiotherapy standards of the world. New Zealand is considered to be an epitome as far as physiotherapy practice and sports rehabilitation and musculoskeletal is concerned down south as well as uh, New Zealand. So Anamika asked to our viewers would like to hear about the status of a physiotherapist in New Zealand and uh, the way about. Please go ahead. Okay, um, am I audible to all of you? Can you hear me loud and clear? Okay, yeah. So thank you so much for giving this opportunity, first of all. Um, this is such a pleasure to have used this platform and guide upcoming student in terms of uh, physiotherapy and choosing the right profession, how they can actually able to advance themselves. Um, I graduated in 2008 and after that I um, I just worked in New Delhi just for one month, one year or something in Sharma Nursing Home. Um, and after that I got selected uh, through for a Ministry of Health and started to work in Saudi Arabia, came back to India and after that I just worked in a neuro setup for another couple of years. Then I got an opportunity to come to New Zealand, which is which is indeed has been quite a blessing. Um, so I came to New Zealand 2011 or something, yeah. And 
soon I couldn't practice. Grass is not always greener on the other side. It's quite rough. Yeah, so yeah, so I couldn't practice straight away. Uh, so uh, um, the city quite a lot of a protocol and quite a lot of um, requirements to fulfill as you consider yourself as a registered physiotherapist in New Zealand. Um, uh, so I, I had to do my post graduation and done. So yeah. Um, so I did my post graduation, got the re got my registration. Finally, was able to practice as a registered registered physiotherapist in New Zealand. At the same time, I was able to. Sorry, that's my child coughing at the back. Sorry about that. Yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah. So at the same time. Um, so at the same time, I also applied for registration in um, Australia. So I'm an Australian uh, licensed uh, registered physiotherapist as well. Um, um, so that's how my journey has been. It's quite tough, but indeed it was quite rewarding. So I'm quite blessed to where I had started and where I had come so far. So it will. Uh, so it. So that's it. So. New Zealand itself is quite, uh, um, yeah, when it comes to physiotherapy, yes, it is considered as an autonomous practice. You are an autonomous practitioner, so that means you choose to decide what is beneficial for your patient. You don't need to come through the GP, just like how Tashi Ma'am had said, that you don't need a referral or anything from anywhere else. Um, you, Your patient can directly come to you. Yes, but you should have a very sound knowledge of diagnosis, management and understanding your patient's expectation. At the same time, you'll be able to plan a fruitful management for them as well. So that's how it works here um, in New Zealand as well in Australia. Um, so you, they'd come to you, you practically design, uh, you practically find out what's wrong with them, design a good management plan for them and help them achieve what they need um, yeah, the most. So that was it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anamika, for that. And uh, just one more question. Do you think an SMCPT graduate would uh, uh, place his or her foot uh, there in New Zealand, like a student who wants to go there? And uh, do you think we are equipping our students uh, as far as the international standards are concerned? Uh, I would definitely say that uh, before we uh, uh, any student um, from India uh, or anywhere else wants to actually um, step ahead in New Zealand, I would definitely say they uh, have to get um, uh, some licensing. Uh, sorry, uh, they have to get that uh, what, what you call that TOEFL or IELTS requirement prepared. It is very much mandatory here. Without that, you will not be able to get into the university and the standards are quite high. Um, it is uh, so it's, it's it's very rewarding. You'll definitely be able to get in. But as soon as like it's like I said, there are quite a bit of a requirement about how like you're scoring your whole bachelor studies and where you have passed out um, and uh, the whole whole thing. And after that, they will expect you to actually have a good score. <laughs> they will, yeah. Uh, uh, fine, thank you, and uh, we're sorry for your kid who's there. And uh, yeah, that's an additional achievement. Congratulations, a mother of one and practicing there. We are more proud of you, more power to you. So yes, coming to our star, uh, Subhashish Karmakar, who, uh, who was a good academician as far as I know in the college times, but uh, I'm quite surprised to know the achievements that you've made, Subhashish. Uh, into the sports arena and it was a proud moment to see you in the Delhi Daredevils team as a physio and uh, you guys were the champions this time, right? Um, not champions actually, uh, near to be champions. Okay, near to a champion. Nevertheless, you are a champion for us, Subhashi. So let's just hear your journey to her uh, till date, yeah. Well, uh, as my colleagues, uh, my friend Anamika, Tashi, Amritanshu, they all said uh, quite a lot of things. And uh, being a physiotherapist is really not easy, either in India or in abroad. It's really not easy. I know what Tashi and Anamika has gone through and what Amritanshu has gone through even. Being a physio in Delhi is not so easy. Uh, it's a lot of hard work you guys have to do and cheers for that. And um, for me, uh, I'll say it's a bit of luck and a bit of try. Well, um, when I was in my final years, as Raymond told me, I was a bit academic. Yeah, I did a lot of studies during that time. Well, uh, it was a good phase in my life. Uh, uh, sitting in the library and studying, I hope uh, that phase come back again 
in everybody's life and uh, it's not easy i think it was one of those happiest times in uh, everyone's life and i'm sure everybody who's here in the window is uh, thinking about those times right now uh, sikkim has given us a lot and especially uh, sikkim manipal you know uh, it's a really really great time we had everyone uh, being as a uh, student uh, our cultural fest sports uh, too many things so yeah still that i'm cherishing those times and yeah my journey is a bit tricky i would say uh, when i was in my final years um, i was doing a lot of research about uk uh, anamika knows she's my batchmate so we used to speak that time um, i actually wanted to start do my mspt but th those days uh, mspt was quite expensive i was not so, so from a rich background those days so i wanted to get a scholarship and um, i started to uh, apply for the scholarship uh, in the i passed out to uh, 2008 but i couldn't get any scholarship that time and i think this what i'm telling might uh, help our students uh, and the uh, guys who are now in the university um also at the same time started applying for the physio assistant jobs in london and uh, as tashi knows and anamika knows it's not easy to get a physio assistant job when you are applying from the home country and uh, going abroad um 90% 95% people don't want to take why do you take a physio assistant from india and who is a recent graduate and it's quite hard for me to get that but fortunately uh, i got the physio assistant job but that time they are not willing to sponsor me because uh, they don't want to give a visa for a physio assistant and uh, well i want to do my masters but yeah i don't have money that time to do it and i got a job i don't want to deny it so in a bit of tricky situation uh, but that time i decided no i don't want to leave my job and i took an admission in my mba so i started my mba at that time i got my student visa 20 hours physiotherapist uh, assistant job and uh, when i'm uh, in my weekends or when i'm off um, i can do full time so it's really uh, it was really uh, great for my uh, uh, future actually and uh, that's the time my journey started yeah but it was not so easy i had to go to a lot of research a lot of applications and a lot of phone calls and it was really really not easy but yeah by god's grace finally i i got a ticket to london and yeah i started my professional journey there and yeah like when you were coming uh, from uh, india or coming from asia it's not easy to uh, see the patients there and you know like uh, yeah definitely first thing is the accent you will not understand the accent it's quite difficult to understand them and which uh, i think we all has uh, gone through that difficulty we were uh, practicing abroad now it's really not easy yeah but somehow i finished my mba and by the time uh, I did a couple of years of working as a physio assistant. I got my license also. So yeah, pretty much quite set for my uh, full-time physio role. Yeah, at the same time, immediately after my MB, I didn't waste my time. I was also applying for my masters. I got a full scholarship masters that time from University of East London. And luckily, that time the London Olympics was round the corner and uh, University of East London took the Uh, was the uh, the base for the US Olympics team so it was like uh, kind of they advertised that we are hosting the US Olympic team come here yeah and i used to stay in stratford and stratford was not there far from university of east london so yeah i joined and straight away in the middle of my course uh, they they thought i can be an addition uh, from the life of the london olympics and they put my name and the US uh, olympics team took me uh, initially as an observer and then i was I mean I was not supposed to um uh, see them because they have the full time physios but yeah I was helping them uh, you can say as an assistant you can say as a physio whatever because uh, I don't have any specific role and I was doing everything the guys like Marion Jones and all it's like you know it's uh, not it's like I was in a sea to see them actually to be very frank but anyhow uh, I did my masters and after I did my masters I got an opportunity to uh, yeah I was I got a Uh, residency they already in uk by that time and um, i got a job in uh, dubai the dubai government uh, for the dubai police 
And I thought, well, I was paying a lot of tax salary in the UK. So I thought, you know, let's save a bit of tax in it. So I just came to Dubai. And yeah, it's a good journey. And Dubai has is giving me a lot of things. Uh, when I came here, I started working in Dubai police and then got into the national team. I was with the UAE athletics teams then the rugby. And now, yeah, I'm a part of Delhi Capitals. I'm a part of uh, T10 league uh, that is also hosted by ICC in Abu Dhabi. Um, I've been given an offer for the PSL for the Multan this year and I didn't join and fortunately they win the title today. So yeah, uh, it's good going on. I'm still with Delhi. Delhi is coming over uh, after three weeks in September. So yeah, you might see me in the television. And uh, yeah, that's it going on as of now. It's kind of mix and match, you can say. Uh, yeah, thank you. That was an insightful, uh, detailed, uh, you know, uh, extempore about what you've been doing and we are mighty proud of you, Subhashi. So reminding of Delhi, I go back to Delhi. Uh, Amritan there. Yeah, he's a Delhi uh, fan. Yeah, he is in Delhi, must be a Delhi fan by no no chance, by default, I believe. So Amritanshu, you're still on mute, but uh, uh, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Uh, so Amritanshu, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, what uh, what what as a role right now, since you're handling the ICUs and the MICUs, what as a physiotherapist? Uh, uh, got to do with uh, the ICU roles. Our, our viewers would like to be interested in knowing what is happening there in the Delhi ICUs. Please give us an analysis about that. Amritanshu, am I audible? Uh, I'm sure uh, Amritanshu is having some problems. So yeah, uh, going back to Tashi. Tashi, what is the typical clinical setup and how do you treat a patient? What are the documentation processes? Uh, our practicing physios would like to know that. What are the check marks that you do? You know, you're on mute, 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 unmute, unmute. Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, as I said earlier, uh, we when we get the patient. We definitely evaluate them, so, you know, all the patients um, do special tests, trying to see what's, what exactly is going on. And here, um, sorry about that, here patients know a lot about conditions. They will tell you at least 50% of, um, of their condition, and then sometimes you feel like, oh, they know more than me. So that's why you have to be really prepared um, about all the special tests. And here, like what I like to do is I explain, um, I like to explain to them why they have that kind of pain or why they're walking like that or why, like kind of like a detailed evaluation. And we usually set up a timeline for like an hour for just the evaluation. So what we do here is we evaluate the patient. Um, we just write some documents and, and a, on a paper and then we start like I treat them for like another um, half an hour. And then um, after that comes the real I don't know about New, uh, New Zealand and Dubai, but we have to do a lot of record like patient record. So we have to do the documentation after that. And uh, which is like a really detailed um, in India, we used to write in a file. You know, we just we used to write whatever a patient has everything, but now we have to here we have to like you know type in save the report and send that plan of care to a, that patient's doctor so and then get the the sign thing back basically um and then you try you tend to see all the patients you know twice a week um depending upon their condition right and um that's pretty much it like um basically have a really sound background of all the knowledge and then i'm really thankful that one thing i would definitely would like to share is you know, remind, I just, you know, um, kind of remember right now is I am definitely thankful to all the SMM's um, teachers who taught us during our student time because I feel like 
the kind of knowledge that I got, it was definitely on the level of United States uh, standard. So basically, when we come here, we have to do the credit evaluation. And then we have to have US uh, standard, like California standard, we have to have 90 credit for the professional education. So when I did the uh, professional education credit evaluation, the SMIM, SMIMS um, evaluation came out to be 130. So for that reason, I didn't have to take any extra classes. It went really smooth for me. So I'm really thankful to all the you know um, teachers, everyone who has spent a lot of time to taught you know teach us whatever I know right now. Um, that being said, I'm also with every patient you have to keep like keep teaching yourself. Like you are never done with the knowledge that you have. Even if you are doing masters, even if you are doing like doctorate of physical therapy, you you see a condition. You go back and then you just go through all the articles and whatever you can find. Um, try to like read more on that one so you can teach all the patients, uh, explain to them what's going on, why. Because I have seen with my five years of experience working as a PT here, I have seen that if a patient knows why they have that pain, why they have that condition, their response to a treatment is better. Um, so yeah, that being said, um, any other questions for me? Uh, thank you, Tashi. We'll get back to you and we'll make sure that you're here till the end of the webinar. Uh, going down to New Zealand again, uh, Anamika, uh, is the troublemaker gone? He's still there. <laughs> yeah, you're, you unmute yourself and tell us about uh, the expertise that is required in the, uh, you know, the musculoskeletal setup that you're working in. Can you just give a brief insight? Un unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. Can you say yeah. that again? Yeah, Can you say uh, that again? since you are in a musculoskeletal setup, right? Uh, so how is it different from here? Or what are the skills that one has to have to, you know, get good patients? Because at the end of the day, it is the patient who's going to talk about you and spread your news mm -hmm. in the community. So uh, word of mouth, how does it enable you as a therapist, especially being from SMCPT? And how does it help you there? Yeah, so um, I have. Um, so practically because I had uh, before I came to New Zealand, I had actually worked in a different setup and that had actually boosted my knowledge and boosted my career um, um, experience in a variety of roles. When I came to New Zealand, uh, I, read, I needed a little bit of flexibility. I was married and possibly in the future I might have a child or something. So I needed a little bit of flexibility. I chose to start uh, to work in a, mus a musculoskeletal setting, which is also considered as a private sector. It is um, a very, um, yeah, it is quite full on. It is, uh, yeah, it is quite full on. There are lots of flat tag patients, one after the other. Uh, I had, I, I, yeah, so I started in Auckland in New Zealand. I started in Auckland for a while and then we moved to Wellington. Uh, in both the places I worked as a musculoskeletal physiotherapist um, in a musculoskeletal setting. When I went to came to Wellington, luckily I joined a foundation or I joined a company which was quite a prestigious, had been building a reputation in the community for more than 25 years. So that was a bit of a task for me, um, actually establishing myself as a physiotherapist with the Kiwis on the side. OK, so yeah, so that was something for me. and. Of course, like and then there's a newbie who's coming to the market and then you have to actually present yourself, actually garner that reputation from the patients. OK, so they can come to you like like uh, Raminda said that like there's a word of mouth okay, that physio is good or something. So she's not Kiwi, but she's good, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Mm. So I had uh, so we started with that. Um, it, I am being very honest here, guys. I'm being very thankful to what I had achieved from SMIMS. The foundation of my physiotherapy was what I got it from SMIMS, you know, so what we had been fed in our five years of <laughs> or four and a half years of bachelors is what had actually helped me here. To, uh, so practically one after the other patient comes and you um, like in US or like in um, Dubai, um, you are practically a clinician. So you're an independent clinician who's actually making a decision for your patient for their own um, uh, for their own benefit. What is right and what is wrong for you? What is wrong for them? So a thorough clinical understanding of the condition 
a good diagnosis of what is there, what is not there. All the special tests or whatever you think that is appropriate to that condition needs to be actually passed into uh, your musculoskeletal setting. Yes, it's very important. A shoulder case come, all the shoulder cases or whatever, uh, practically whatever the special test or whatever you know more about you have to actually do a lot of brainstorming and present that to your patient. Okay, if this is not, what is the other thing that you could actually do? So yeah, so uh, yeah, a thorough understanding, and after that, you'll be able to implement that in their um yeah in their management as well. So I would definitely say, yes, I would definitely say um, keep up with the good work and um, make a good foundation when you're in your in your bachelor's. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, so coming back to Meri Desh Ki Dharti, uh, Amritan there, uh, Delhi. Uh, am I audible to you now? Amritan am I audible to you? Yeah, unmute, unmute yourself. Un unmute yourself, please. Amritanshu, you need to unmute yourself, please. The, uh, we are we are yet still not getting you. We, you are not audible. You have to unmute yourself. Uh, no, we are not able to hear you. They're still having some technical difficulties with Amritanshu and Delhi. In the meanwhile, uh, going to Dubai now, uh, Subhashish, uh, please tell us about, uh, you know, how uh, our, our young guns can get into the sports team, that sports is being developed in the hills, in the northeast, in the state as a whole with IPL and all the Kabaddi leagues and all that. So how does one stand a chance uh, to get into these leagues? Um, I, I would say like sports is the one of the most difficult thing to get into. And uh, the leagues which you were speaking about, these are billion dollar leagues. And uh, to get into this kind of league, uh, it's not anybody can get in. There's no way. You have to be in a, you have to have a lot of, I'll not say a lot of uh, skills and a lot of education. You need to have a good rapport with the players very important very very important the moment uh, you develop a good rapport uh, they will not leave you uh, personal rapport is very important to develop with the players and uh, i believe everybody is educated masters phd uh, like education is never a problem uh, like uh, anybody who's doing a bachelor's most of the guys are doing masters even are not doing a masters they have 10 15 years of experience I don't believe uh, education and experience is a big thing. Uh, it's a rapper. You need to develop your rapper. You need to get out to them. And uh, I would say a lot of researches it must be done in a ground level. You have to start with the small teams. Uh, don't jump into a team like an IPL or a national team. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, you have to have at least 10 to 15 small teams you have to work for in different sports. Uh, slowly, slowly, you have to build your career. You can't jump into a IPL team or a national team. I'll I'll say if I say about India, it's a 1.2 billion population, maybe around uh, 10 lakh physios are there. Everybody's aiming for the Indian national team, and it's not easy. So you have to, if you don't get the national team, work with the state team. If you don't get the state team, work with the club team. Work work with the district team. But keep on working, aim big, and uh, get on the opportunity what you are getting. Slowly, slowly, you will uh, you will uh, make the lead, and uh, yes, yeah, Kim is uh, produced great great athletes. It is really a land of great athletes. So yeah, and Sikkim is they are always on the radar in the in India producing great athletes. So I think Sikkim is really a great place to develop sports, and uh, I think uh, the lot of uh, guys from Sikkim, uh, Darjeeling. They are in a you know football team. They are playing ISL. So yeah, I think uh, Sikkim Manipal is providing a great opportunity uh, for these guys who are studying there to uh, 
be associated with some sports. Even not, they are not getting into a full-time role, they can do some internship, some voluntary. So by the time they'll be finishing their degree, uh, bachelor's, master's, they at least have a few experience which they can carry over uh, in the next level. And uh, any kind of experience is always valuable. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, thank you. And yes, uh, uh, I, I can add upon Sikkim Sports with our altitude. We are 1500 meters above sea level, so we have a high altitude training yeah. base, which Subhashis could come back and get some funds from Dubai and do it and make it a center of sports excellence, right? Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, Tashi, uh, please tell me about uh, what do you feel is the present requirement of a physiotherapist and uh, how can uh, one uh, aspirant uh, enhance his or her skill while being in India to prepare for abroad? So um, basically, um, as I said earlier, definitely have a sound knowledge of all the physical therapy, um, anatomy, physiology and everything. Once you have a base um, strong knowledge, you can beat any competition. So while being there, um, there is this big monster here that's called National Physical Therapy Examination. I would definitely say if you're planning to come to the United States, be it California, New York, or any other state, you have to beat that exam. So it's a really dreadful six hour examination. Um, you will have only five hours to, to complete all the multiple choice questions. So be, uh, one thing um, that I would like to um, just emphasize is um, just practice on your multiple choice question skills. Because when we were in India, um, you know, we were just doing like all the like notes and all the questions we were like right in paragraphs. So I was not used to multiple choice questions. So basically uh, study and prepare for the National Physical Therapy Examination. You can do, well, I came here um, as a citizen. Like I came here, I did not go to a student visa or anything. So I don't have a, an experience um, regarding that matter, but I talked to another, my senior who's from SMIMS too. Um, so he told me a couple of things. So basically what you need to do is you apply, if you want to come here as a student and work as a PT, you apply for, a, any course related to physical therapy. So you be it kinesiology, be it uh, biomechanics, be it anything, like you just apply for a course and then you, once you get uh, a student visa, you come here while you're studying, you can prepare for the national physical therapy exam, just pass the license exam. Once you're licensed in any state, then you can, you don't have to complete that course. You can go and jump and then start working right away. So an agency or any, if you apply for a job, they will um, sponsor you. It's, it's, I think it's called H-1B visa. So they can, they'll sponsor you. Um, so one bad news is Indian, like in the, from India, there are like thousands and thousands of students trying to come to the United States. But mm -hmm. so Indian quota, like you only get seven, um, I think they only give green card to seven students in a year. So the wait time is really long. So it can be like, uh, I don't want to discourage you guys, but it can be like over 15 years too. So, but that being said, I would definitely, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying PT life in India is bad or anything. It's, it's great. So I tell my coworkers, like even Raymond too, like you guys are having a really great life over there. Um, but if you dream of like, if you see yourself, you know, working in the United States, dream of being like Americans and stuff like that, I don't think it's an issue. You can, you just don't have the green card, but you can still keep working as a physical therapist here while you're also um, trying to keep waiting for uh, for the United government, United States government to issue a green card. So um, basically, you'll have a you'll have a good life. Um, yeah, so so I would say start preparing for a national physical therapy exam. That's the most important thing. Um, you have to drill and then, you know, um, keep, you know, drill with all the knowledge like from physical therapy, bachelor's, like from first year anatomy, physiology, everything. You just smug up everything. Um, you study, you study, and then that's it. Like a lot of education, a lot of like late night um, staying. I remember me like staying up. Um, till like I don't remember like I was here in the house um, 
like literally for one month I didn't go out at all. I was cooped in and then preparing for this like dreadful exam. Like, yeah. As Anamika said, like it is not easy, but challenges are what you you know you you face the challenge and then you see where you are right now. If you're less scared of any challenges, if you're like kind of you step back a little, then you will always be in a mediocre level. And then if you want to see yourself up there, if you want to see yourself like achieve your goals and your dreams, always challenge yourselves. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tashi. I, when you were delivering your struggles, I could see the faces of all the three, the two of you also who have gone through the same. So let's not repeat the question. But uh, coming to Subhashish, you know, uh, I would like to uh, get more details on uh, how we can uh, develop uh, sports fraternity with, you know, what are the latest in the sports? What is the, what are the latest trends, if there are any, that are up in the, the field of sports? And uh, this is also a reminder to our attendees that you can shoot yes, a question to our experts. Yes, Amritanshu, I can also hear you. Welcome back, my dear friend. We'll have your question in, uh, in, an, in a jiffy right now. But uh, Subhashish, uh, my question to you is what are the latest trends that are happening in sports training and rehabilitation? And also a request to our attendees who are there. You can shoot your questions to our experts and we'll be happy to answer that. Actually, I'm in a basement right now. Probably some network issues is going on. I think Amitanshu is uh, speaking. And Hello, you guys can hear me? Uh, regarding the latest trends, uh, I would say uh, still uh, for the international teams and the leagues, hands-on is the best thing still happening. People like Rishabh Pant, people like Ravi Chandran Ashwin, they still like hands-on. They still like to be treated in an old traditional way. Yeah, there are a lot of advances which are happening in sports. Uh, a lot of machines are coming in, a lot of techniques are coming in. But uh, to be very frank to tell, sports is a very big thing and you can't club that. What are the trends happening just in few words? Uh, there must be a particular uh, like sector, like an electro or you want a manual, mulligans, there are many things that there. Like even mulligans are continuously uh, developing their, uh, like, you know, the approach of the patients. So uh, overall, there's a lot of things happening in sports. But uh, to simplify, I'll tell, like if you're working in the highest level, uh, they want more hands on training. You need to be very good in, the, in your manual therapy. Uh, you need to be very good uh, and the, the approach must be problem solving. Uh, like when you are in a, for example, I'll tell you like uh, when I'm in IPL, like with Delhi, like uh, one of the very big player had a shoulder dislocation and uh, he's too big to miss the next match. So you can't just tell him, OK, I'm going to see you over a couple of days or three days. I'm going to give you treatment. We'll see now. You can't do that. As I said before, it's a billion dollars on stake. The owners will come to you. Hey, physio, what you are doing? I want this player playing next day. If he's not playing, there's a sponsorships. There are too many things. So you can't do that. You have to make him play. Yeah, definitely there's some procedures like the player's consent and all you need to take and you have to see like what is the seriousness but again then you have to go back to taping striping uh, all the i am and everything you have to do and you have to make him play so yeah we have to uh, do a lot of uh, risk management but uh, still i'll say uh, till now it's more on a hands-on like uh, people the guys need to be very good in the hands-on from bachelor's level and if you're not good in hands-on you can't survive in sports you need to being very good in anatomy, you need to have a. I have a very good chat with uh, Mr. Patrick Fahat. He, he was a Australian physio and a physio of the uh, Indian national cricket team for a long time. And also, uh, he's my co-worker in uh, Delhi Capitals. Uh, like he's a 57-year guy and he's uh, too much talented. He worked with Punjab Kings. He worked with Mumbai. So I learned a lot of things from him. Uh, he's like a gem. Uh, he taught me all the time that you need to be very good in anatomy. Like when you touch the patient, you need to know exactly what is happening beneath it. If you're not good in anatomy and you are not good in biomechanics, you can't survive in sports, not at the highest level. You can just uh, do bluffing for a few times, few months, few years, but yeah, you can't uh, so like you can't make it on the highest level because 
these guys in the highest level, they know exactly what is happening with their body. And if you bluff them, you're not going to work. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Subhashish. Indeed, uh, we need to be hands on. I hope it's a message for all the students out there. Your anatomy is important and as well as your biomechanics and all that. So uh, over a nutshell, what I can see and say from the three speakers we've had uh, is that uh, the basic knowledge that SMT, SMCPT has imparted has really equipped you guys to face it out and you know beat the others uh, like Anamika was saying non Kiwi but a good physio. So all my congratulations to the three of you. Uh, we are yet to have Amritansh because he's having his network issues. Nevertheless, uh, coming to Anamika again, what do you think is the scope of physiotherapy uh, and uh, how uh, well are uh, you know the present scenario in physiotherapy? What is the demand and uh, how well is it going to do in the future? Unmute, unmute yourself. Um, can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah. So thank you for the question, Nda. So um, yeah, physiotherapy itself is a very rewarding profession, everyone. Um, uh, like, um, yeah, like, uh, yeah, we have been just going on and on about like, you know, have a good sound knowledge, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we have been going on and on about like, yeah, hands on, having a sound knowledge, a good anatomy, a good biomechanics. Yeah, that's all part of it as well. Um, what I have been observing in New Zealand and Australia um, at the moment is if you're in a musculoskeletal setting or yeah, let's call it a musculoskeletal setting. I don't expect it to be happening in a public sector. So um, in other words, we call it a government hospital in, New Z uh, in India. So if, if it's if you're in a public, uh, if you're in a musculoskeletal setting, what your patient really wants is like, OK, you have given me an exercises. You've done a little bit of soft tissue stretching. What else can you offer me? What do you have? What is your what are your skills? What can you present to me or what can you deliver to me in order to make my uh, process of um, recovery speedy? So yes, in that way, yes, you have to actually open your toolkit. You have to check what else can you offer them. Um, so what I have seen a late, latest um, trend is dry needling, acupuncture. So those are the certain things where the physiotherapist nowadays has been drifting away a little bit. OK, so yes, this is a, practically you're still a physiotherapist. You're still doing your exercises. You're still doing your evidence based approaches that you have been taught and you have been actually re-researching over and over a period of time. But yes, apart from that, uh, uh, if a patient comes to me with a very tight calf muscle, which I have done a lot of good hands on treatment, a good stretching, Yes, I might need to do something else. It's it's not been happening. It's not it's not unchanging. Or that physio is not. She's just been giving me exercises. She's just been doing a lot of hands on, and she's just been actually stretching and uh, giving whatsoever, checking my biomechanics. But she's I'm not still not able to do. So here I could see in Australia and New Zealand trends are a bit changing. We are actually taking some other approaches in hand: kinesiology, dry needling acupuncture, physiotherapy, acupuncture. OK, some of the things that I have seen, this is what is is been happening and it has actually been quite you see quite a dramatic results. So yes, sometimes you may want to actually couple attend. We call it here continue professional development courses that yes. Yeah, so some needling courses, acupuncture, kinesiology, K taping. These are quite um, a valuable thing and these are you can actually have it in your toolkit and me, it may be able to actually bring it on when you see on. Oh, I'm not I'm not getting a good result. I'm the Things are just unchanging for my patients. So what makes you quite a different from that physio who's just around the block is this. That physio did that work for me. It just worked miraculously. I need to go to her again or I need to go to him again. So that was makes you actually quite a different from the other physios. Mm, yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Anamika. That was uh, indeed. Yes, uh, we've had uh, dry needling and uh, other adjuncts to therapy that we'd like to call it. They are in vogue nowadays and people do get carried away. Maybe let it be a placebo or it's got a physiological yeah. basis behind it. But at the end of the day, if the patient is happy and you're getting your bucks, yeah. that's what matters, right? 
Uh, so uh, coming to Amrit Anshu, because of network issues, I think uh, he's audible only. We will not be able to have his video. Amrit Anshu, can you hear me? Uh, no response. Uh, so yeah, uh, Tashi, getting back to my friend there uh, in California, must be sleepy. But uh, just tell us about how different is a setup from a like uh, you. You are practicing in a, a basic general physio clinic, which has no specialities as such. But how do you segregate uh, a neuro case and an ortho case and a CBR or whatever women's health? So what are the segregation in a patient that happens? Can you just elaborate on that? So when we get a patient, we uh, we see what's going on. That's how we know, oh, it's a stroke patient, neurology, or it's a fracture patient, orthopedic. Or um, in my case, we see only patients like 65 and above. So it's geriatric population. With geriatric, you'll see um, neurological cases, you'll see orthopedic cases, all different conditions. Um, so when you do the evaluation again, so that's how you know that where you are kind of going. If you're uh, seeing more neurological symptoms, then you take out your knee hammer, you take out your sensory testing kit, and then you do all the dermatome level testing, you do all the myotome level testing. That's how I you know, like patients from neurological case or orthopedic case or those kind of um, those kind of different things. Um, with that being said, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it, it, it all comes to your anatomy. Just like Subhas has said, you have to have your anatomy knowledge really, really strong. Um, I really want to uh, give a huge shout out to all the teachers that taught us uh, during my student uh, time that like they really drilled us there like we had to have constant um, you know surprise tests every time we come to classes like they would like okay today is a test day so that way like you know we keep we had to keep studying anatomy even if you're in second year or third year we had to keep studying anatomy so it really um, you know makes your base strong once your base is strong like you can you can do anything, um, you know, none, none of the doctors can tell you what you need to do. Sometimes here you can see some doctors like writing uh, prescription in a sense like, OK, like uh, it's a shoulder or frozen shoulder or it's a bursitis or something like that. But we never go through that diagnosis. We are qualified enough. We have studied enough um, about human body, uh, how they work. To be qualified enough to make our own diagnosis. So what what we do is okay, the doctor has written like bursitis, so we do our own like um, diagnosis, and then that's how we like oh that's not bursitis actually, it's more impingement syndrome, and that's how like I make my evaluation report and I send it back to the doctor, not challenging the doctor, but they're also pretty most of the time they're pretty good and they kind of say okay I agree with you know, the physical therapist diagnosis, I agree with the plan of care. So uh, basically, um, you are your boss, your own boss. The only thing you have to cave in is to the patients here. Patients are the boss right here. So when they tell you they are having certain problem, they're, if they tell you like, uh, you know, like they're not getting better with the treatment, you have to listen to them. You have to try another approach, maybe something else is going on or maybe like you know when they're having a lot of lower back pain you just concentrate on your on the lower back pain like core strengthening everything when you examine them you'll see oh they have scoliosis that's why they're having the lower back pain but if you concentrate only on core strengthening glute strengthening that's not going to take their lower back pain away so basically you have to when someone comes in for lower back pain i kind of um do the whole body examination, see their posture, see how they work, walk. So if they're walking in a different, like, you know, with a faulty gait, and then you keep treating their, like, uh, stretching their glutes, stretching their hamstrings, stretching their back muscles, the pain's not going to go away completely. And then if patients are unhappy, you're losing the patient. The patient's going to go to another physical therapy clinic, so your boss is not happy. So. It all comes to your knowledge, your, your, you have to be bold and confident in yourself. You have to be confident uh, 
about the knowledge that you have. Um, also, not being overconfident. Like if you feel like you're you have something lacking, just just you know like talk to the patient, do your treatment, go back and study again. You know it doesn't hurt to study every day. So um, yes, definitely. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tashi. So finally, with a lot of trysts with destiny, we've been able to get our Amrita Anshu Kumar back online. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, Raman, I can hear you. Great, it feels so relieved to come make you make the webinar complete, my friend. Without you, it's nothing. So yes, uh, as I was asking, uh, the present COVID scenario in Delhi and yeah. how are you guys battling out in the ICUs? Actually, over here, physiotherapy, uh, intensive care physiotherapy is the backbone of our hospital. You know, we are getting numerous, numerous, uh, numerous uh, referral every day, and they want us to work with them all the time. The COVID center. So we are working intensely in the COVID ICU, and uh, we are doing our best to help the COVID patients to recover with their illnesses. You know. Because initially the infection, uh, the infective period, it, it lasts for, it, it will last very quickly, and once it goes, it leaves the patient in a very debilitated state, and no one is going to help those patients unless until we are, we get involved with them. So over here we are getting, you know, a large number of referrals, and we are loaded with the work. Uh, uh, so what is the like, you know, the doctor and the physio thing always happening? So it's a, it's good to learn that the uh, hospital you're working in right now has a good sense of support and belongingness to the physio fraternity, which is very important. And uh, mm -hmm. one more question again is our students would like to go to Delhi because uh, number one, it's the capital and all the, the best uh, centers of health and, you know, healthcare and physiotherapy is also in Delhi. So uh, a brief mm -hmm. insight into what is a physio life in Delhi for our uh, young aspirants who want to go there? What uh, what I can say about Delhi is that uh, a lot of people are required over here, but you have to be very uh, you have to be specialist in your field, and you have to be very dedicated. So in a hospital setup, uh, they are looking for specialized people. So you have to be a uh, specialist in your field, like you have to be masters in your, you have to be masters. And uh, MPTs and PhDs are in a lot of demand over here. So if you are, if you are a graduate and you are looking for a job over here, it will be a little challenging. You will get uh, jobs in home care setups, clinics. And uh, in hospital setup, definitely you need to be masters over here. So definitely one should work uh, for higher degrees uh, before you <laughs> want to work in hospital or hospital mm -hmm. setup. Great, thank you. Uh, home visits reminds me of, uh, you know, a question short to all the three of you. How, how are the home visits there uh, in Dubai, New Zealand and America? Anamika, you can go first. Any scope for home visits? So um, over here um, in New Zealand, uh, I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. That is uh, a case in Australia. But um, over here in New Zealand, uh, we, there's something that is known as um, ACC or accident compensation cases. So they are the one who does the biggest funding for the uh, outpatient or a private physiotherapy treatment. So any kind of accident, 80% of that um, a physiotherapy fee will be paid by ACC, and 20% will be paid by your um, or surcharge will be paid by your patient. So that's how the whole uh, private sector works. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that's how it works here. Um, majority of people can come to physiotherapy because ACC not only offers uh, you um, uh, just the 80% of the funding to see the physiotherapy because it could be really pricey to see a physiotherapist over here. Uh, so it could be, it's, yeah, it's quite in demand. It's quite popular. You're quite busy, but yeah, it could get quite practical pricey and heavy on your budget as well. So ACC does that a lot of uh, what we call um, uh, mobility. Yeah, so uh, mobility um, uh, devices or um, uh, transportation so they can come to physiotherapy, physiotherapy clinic by themselves. 
But certain scenarios where patient is bound uh, to stay at home, they cannot come or they want to be treated in their own um, family zone. In that case, yes, um, they can certainly call a musculoskeletal or a private physiotherapist, but they can actually they cannot approach a public se sector or a government or uh, um, government uh, or working physiotherapist. In that case, uh, yes, you will, <laughs> yes, you will be charged. Um, you will be charging that patient a lot more because that. Uh, everybody uh, uh, does a home physiotherapy, but I have got. Yeah, so not everyone does home physiotherapy here because they can actually come to physiotherapists. But yes, there are there are some population who wants to have a physiotherapist and they're willing to pay physiotherapy, even though that's quite pricey. Yeah, thank you. All right, you. so uh, the, we are running out of stipulated time. So quickly uh, to Shubhashish, uh, how about home practices there in Dubai? Um, yeah, home practices here. Also, like uh, uh, also a reminder to all the attendees, you can make your questions and uh, type it there in the question box and send it for our uh, participants here. Thank you. Yeah, Subhashish, please go ahead. Um, there are home visitors here, uh, it's like uh, quite same like other countries, like the insurance companies uh, who uh, conduct the home visits and there's some hospitals also uh, like who are uh, providing home visits. So I think home visit is always there for the uh, vulnerable population and the guys who are post op can't come to the hospitals. So yeah, it's pretty much same uh, like uh, as Anamika said, like uh, the insurance companies and uh, like if somebody is calling a physio for a home visit, that's very costly because um, and if you that guy particularly don't have any insurance, so uh, it's uh, I would, I'll say it's mostly for the high net worth individuals. But normally uh, the home visits are tied up to the insurance companies and most of the people uh, use the insurance uh, and the insurance companies will decide the physios there will decide how many sessions 10 15 uh, depending on the condition there are some codes that there the codes are used to decide how many sessions the patient might need and that's the way these things work here it, uh... Yeah, uh, so Tashi, uh, uh, take away home message because uh, we're coming to an end of our webinar. So starting from Tashi, can we just have a take away home message, a short and sweet one? Yeah. Um, so basically, I would like to say that, you know, um, there will be a lot of um, like leg pulling comments uh, going on around you. They were saying like physical therapy. I don't know what, you know, why don't you just do the 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 MBBS or dental program or anything. But if you see yourself treating a patient without prescribing any medicine, rehabilitating them, having all the you know liberty to design a plan for yourself, then this is the profession you should go for. If you're just doing it because someone is pushing you to, you don't know what's going on there. You don't know what physical therapy is. Definitely do your research first. And then if you see yourself doing this for your whole life, um, then go for it. Um, and then again, the, the last thing I would like to say is we all we all study because um, basically money is the prior goal, right? So I want to talk about money a little bit before I let you guys go. Um, here in the United States, um, the minimum um, pay scale for physical therapists, it's um, $38 per hour. So if you do the math in Indian currency, I would say that's like around $3,000 per hour. So you're making a lot of good money. That's like the, the, the minimum salary. Um, the, the average is like $43 per hour. And then home health, uh, they're ready to pay, excuse me, they're ready to pay you like somewhere around 80, $70 to $95 per hour. So that's a lot of money. Um, so that's what, encourage everybody like you know attract everyone towards the money but then if you see yourself definitely treating your patient um rehabilitating them um and then you know like it just it gives me a great joy to see them transition from a wheelchair to walker cane and then no assistive devices you know be able to see them walk without any help to able to uh, treat them without prescribing any medicine, anything. It's just hands-on exercises. All the techniques you have learned uh, throughout your, 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 your bachelor's, your master's, your doctorate level, 
So, um, yeah, this is it. I would definitely like to thank all the attendees for coming here and then listening to our, you know, our talks. And then I would, I want you guys to take away some knowledge from all of us uh, with all the experience that we have. When I was a student, I never got this opportunity. So thank you to all the faculty members to for giving them such a great opportunity to get a hands-on experience, you know, from all of us, you know. And then definitely all the attendees like take the experience learn, do your research, and then take it from there. Thank you. Thank you, Tashi, uh, for that. Uh, uh, not a short, but a sweet message. Yeah, uh, there's a question uh, and I would like to publish that. It is, uh, I think Anamika could uh, get the answer for that. Uh, what are the scope of physiotherapists uh, in Australia and US alike? So I think you can just uh, answer that briefly. We've already done that, but still, since there is a question, what kind of an examination do they have to undergo for any kind of, uh, you know, uh, or, or I'll quote the question, do we have to undergo any kind of examination in Australia or likewise in the US? Um, thank you for the question. And, um, so in New Zealand, um, and um, so I'll, I'll, I'll just give a short and, sh short and sweet message here. If you're actually a licensed physiotherapist, either in Australia, you will be able to practice in New Zealand without having to undergo any kind of examination. Likewise, if you are a registered physiotherapist in New Zealand, you can practice in Australia without having to sit for any exam. So if you choose to come to New Zealand, so if you choose to come to New Zealand, you, uh, you, yes, um, yes. So you have to actually sit. I wouldn't say there is an exam or something. They would first of all actually evaluate what you have studied in your bachelor's. Okay, what, where have you passed out in your bachelor's? So, I'm sorry to say I'm bringing this one here, but there's so many institutions chirping like a mushroom all over in all over in India. But ours is one of the fantastic university. I had never had any issue when I was submitting my application to the board. Now, so when when I say board is a physiotherapy board of New Zealand, um, so they actually evaluate the whole thing, but they usually ask you to undergo a post graduation study. So to actually check whether you are competent to be a physiotherapist in their country. OK, so so you are not a non competent physio. You are a competent physio, but in order to be a competent physio, you have to actually sit for that uh, muscular post graduation musculoskeletal uh, or post whatever you choose to be, whether it's neuro women's health, whether it's the sports. So that's what you need to do. And from there, yeah, once you've got the registration, you can actually submit a small application and that is to um, Australia and you gain your registration and likewise you'll be able to work on both sides just the way I'm doing at the moment. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the questions have started flowing in, but uh, the three, four questions which are common about uh, scholarship programs for masters and a uh, little bit more information about PT works. So I request our participants to send in the links, the necessary documentation processes, whatever it is, an information brochure maybe from your side to the students, which we will share in our websites and the Facebook pages that we will share this webinar along it will not waste time on answering such questions because they, they require technical expertise at the end of the day. Uh, Amrit Anshu, uh, uh, take away message uh, from your side to our uh, audience, please. What I say, what I would like to say about this profession is that the best part I enjoy the most is that I'm able to help the patient in every aspect of their existence, whether it be their health, confidence or even overcoming major obstacles that seem to be incurable. Other thing which I love about this profession is because there is a autonomy in the practice and six figure salary potential in India and even more. And there is ability to work uh, as a part time. Uh, there is ability to work part time and, and at last it gives you immense satisfaction when you are able to help the patient recover with their illnesses. So I'll, I would like to say that it is a wonderful field one should opt for. And uh, I'll, I'll give it a five star course, you know. So please choose this career. You will enjoy it. Thank you.
Thank you. That yeah, indeed, it is a five-star course for us. Yeah. Uh, so to end today's session, Subhashish Karmakar with a takeaway message. After that, we'll have the vote of thanks from Dr. Amika Lama. Yeah. Well, I would say uh, you guys are in the best hands. This is one of the best institutes in India, and whatever we are here today, we are speaking, and it's a uh, lot belong to the teachers, uh, Nikita Ma'am, and uh, our seniors. Like everybody helped us to be where we are today. And I would just say, believe in yourself. Don't jump for big things at the early stage of your career. Give time. Physiotherapy is a hard profession. You'll not get results instantly. You need to give time for it. You need to work hard. You have to be uh, confident. You have to be honest. You have to be good. Uh, you have to develop good rapport with the people. Uh, as Tashi said before, patients are the boss. You need to listen to the patients. Uh, you can't be, uh, treatment can't be one sided, like whatever you think can't be the right. Sometimes patients can teach you. So you need to listen to the patients. And I believe uh, if you have this aspects, uh, I think you can really go far in the career. And uh, physiotherapy is uh, uh, not so regulated in India in current stage. So yeah. Those who are the best will have a long run. So it's like a run. You start from your bachelor's and you have to run until you succeed in your life. So just continue that with honesty. That's it. Thank you. Uh, one more question uh, that has shot up is, uh, can we work as an aide before we apply for license in Australia? Uh, this goes out to Anamika, I think. Can we apply? Uh, can we basically? I think the question is trying to say that can you become an apprentice before you are licensed? Yeah. yeah. Thank you for the question again. So, physio aid or physio assistant? Uh, yes, certainly you will be able to do that. You can actually apply. I started the same way. I couldn't practice as a physiotherapist at one point of of my life that I was so disheartened. Okay. Uh, that I'm like, OK, I have got this big certificate Bachelor of Physiotherapy from Sikkim Manipal Institute of Medical Sciences. What I'm going to do with it, whether I'll be able to practice in this country or no. So I yeah, and because there was such a long requirement about this Australian and physiotherapy and New Zealand physiotherapy board that I was I was li literally disheartened, guys. I'm not going to lie, right? So yeah, so uh, but then at the same time, I was like, nah, I'm going to take that leap of faith. I'm going to try. Whether I succeed or no, I'm going to take a chance. OK, so that's what I did. I started. I couldn't practice straight away as a physiotherapist. You cannot even call yourself a physiotherapist in here unless until and unless you are a registered physiotherapist. That's what you'll be calling. You cannot call yourself a physiotherapist, even if you are overseas qualified physiotherapist. So yes, certainly. Uh, so that's how I started. I couldn't practice as a physiotherapist in this in this two countries. I started as a physio aide. Salary was all right. I wouldn't say it is what you earn as a physiotherapist. It was still OK, but um, fortunately for me, I didn't have to go just like Tashi Mam. I didn't have to go through this whole student visa process. I was just for a short period of time work visa, got my permanent residency, and now I'm a citizen of New Zealand. So this wasn't I didn't have to undergo that whole process. I started as so I got the job immediately as a physio assistant because I had this beautiful um, clinical experience and a good um, academic uh, record. So I got this and I started to work. I worked as couple. Of, I, I worked as hardly like for a couple of years so that I can earn enough money uh, so I can actually prepare for my postgraduate studies. So that makes me eligible to put my application for the board. So now you are considered from a physio aid to a registered physiotherapist. So that's so yes, you there are quite a quite a bit of an opportunity to work as a physiotherapist. Um, Indian medics or Indian medicos, whether you are a doctor, whether you are a dentist, whether you're a physiotherapist, they are very they they are, they have got a quite a high demand in these two countries. They have a quite a high reputation in these two countries, guys. So yeah, so that's how I started. And so you'll be able to get through too. All the best. Mm, great. Uh, thank you. So in a nutshell, uh, uh, thank you so much for being patient. Amrita Anshu for uh, battling the network issues and coming with us and getting us live and imparting your knowledge of whatever you've done. Tashi, thank you for the insightful views into the United States. Anamika as chirpy as always. Uh, 
and I hope you're keeping your music skills alike. Uh, Subhashish, thank you so much. And uh, we'd request all of you to contribute back to the college in any way you can in form of webinars, workshops, seminars, and even you know hands-on learning sessions for our students. We'd be obliged if you guys do that. So uh, handing on the reins of this webinar now finally to the vote of thanks uh, to Dr. Ambika Lama. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Gratitude is a quality similar to electricity. It must be produced and discharged and used up in order to exist at all. Beautiful words by William Flockner. We would uh, like to th uh, thank uh, everybody who have attended our webinar. And starting with, we would like to extend our gratitude to the Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Lieutenant General Rajan S. Garewal, for his support and uh, guidance. We are grateful to our registrar, Dr. Karma Sonam Sherpa, for his consistent supervision and advice. We are grateful to the Dean SMIMS, Dr. Sudeep Datta, for providing all logistics and ensuring that conductance of the webinar is smooth. Uh, my heartfelt gratitude to the speakers who, in spite of being from different time zones and busy schedules, accepted our invitation and delivered an insightful talk. We thank all our participants who have joined us today and made this webinar a huge success. None of us could have conducted this webinar without the complete support of our and guidance from Mr. Vijay and SMU IT team. We truly appreciate his hard work and uh, thank you to everyone present today. Have a beautiful day. Thank you guys. Uh, good day, good night, Shabak hair. All of all of that to you guys. May the force be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.